Hello everyone, so today we'll be looking at the working memory module and as always I'm following along with the AQA psychology textbook for A level year one and AS with the green haired girl on. So the things you need to know and be able to recognise. Your specification point is the working memory model, central executive, phonological loop, visio-spatial sketchpad and episodic buffer. Features of the model coding and capacity. Now this is an explanation for how short-term memory is organised into many components. So the working memory model was put forward by Badley in Hitch in 1974 and it's concerned with the part of the mind that is active when we temporarily store and manipulate information. So there's four main components and they're qualitatively different in terms of capacity and coding and this is your central executive, your phonological loop, your physiospatial sketchpad and your episodic buffer. So these are known as slave systems, not the central executive because that is the boss, but those other three are your slave systems and each of these systems are independent so they work separately from one another. Now the phonological loop also has a phonological store, an articulatory control system which we'll have a look at, and your visio spatial sketchpad also has your inner scribe and your visio cache. So your central executive. Now this is an attentional process and it monitors incoming information. So it makes decisions and it allocates slave systems to tasks. So it determines how resources will be allocated and the central executive has a limited processing capacity. It coordinates the activities of the three subsystems, it's the boss, and it's modality free. It can process any information from our sensors. So your first slave system is the phonological loop. So this deals with auditory information. Think of that because of phonetics, phonological. So remember, coding is acoustic in short term memory. And what the phonological loop does is it preserves the order which information arrives. And this phonological loop is then subdivided into the phonological store. So think of this as storing the words you hear. So they're all in order, it stores them. And then the articulatory process allows that maintenance rehearsal. So it repeats the sounds or words in a loop and it keeps them in your working memory while they are needed. So the capacity is believed to be two seconds worth of what you can say. So it's very, very limited. You also have your visio spatial sketchpad and that's your second slave system. So it stores visual and spatial information, visual from visio and spatial, your spatial information. So when you're working out how many windows there are in your house, you will picture it in your mind visually. You'll go around in your head trying to count them. So it has a limited capacity of about three to four objects when it's coming into your memory system and Logie in 1995 subdivided this visual spatial sketchpad into the visual cache so that stores your visual data and the inner scribe which records the arrangement of objects in the visual field. Your episodic buffer is something more recent than the 1974 model and it was added in 2000 and this is a storage system so it's responsible for integrating information from all working memory components and from long term memory into chunks or episode and there is a limited capacity of four chunks. So now look at the evaluation. So we've got clinical evidence, we have support from KF, now remember he was studied by Charles and Warrington in 1970, who suffered brain damage, he's your motorcycle accident guy. So KF had poor short term memory ability for verbal information, but could process visual information normally when it was presented visually. He had difficulty with sounds, but could recall numbers. So it suggests his phonological loop had been damaged, but it left other areas of memory intact as he could process visual information normally. So it supports the idea that there are these separate short term memory stores for visual and acoustic information. But we've really also got to consider that brain damaged patients aren't that reliable. They're a single case and this must be considered in our evaluation. 
We also have this dual task performance. So the top line just explains what that is. And it is a strength there. So a dual task performance is where you ask participants to perform two tasks simultaneously. So at the same time, if participants are slower at doing these tasks at the same time than when they do them separately, it's assumed that both tasks are competing for the same resources in the brain. So Badley et al. in 1975 conducted one of these dual task performance tasks. So he asked participants to do two visual tasks. So they had to track a light and also describe the letter F at the same time. And participants had difficulty compared to when doing a visual and a verbal task at the same time. So this supports the idea that there is competition in the slave systems when doing two visual tasks, but not when doing a visual and a verbal task because they're using separate components. So therefore, there must be a separate slave system that processes visual output. So that's your visual spatial sketch pad. A limitation is that we have a lack of clarity over the central executive. Now, Badley thinks that the central executive is the most important, but it's the least understood component of working memory. So what does it actually explain? All we can say is that it's related to attention, but that's it. So we need more research on this particular part of working memory because some researchers believe it consists of many separate components and it hasn't yet been fully explained therefore. It was added in 2000 however so we can say that it has been revised since its original foundations in 1974. So a strength is that we have studies of the word length effect supporting the phonological loop. Badley et al in 1975 showed that people find it harder to remember a list of long words for example, association, that's quite a long word. It's harder to remember than shorter words. So the word length effect is the length of words. So why is it that we find it harder to remember association? And this is because of something called rehearsal. So you can rehearse short words due to a finite space of about two seconds. But if you use an articulatory suppression task, so that's a repetitive thing, so such as saying la 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 la, this task means that shorter words no longer have an advantage over those longer ones. So there's no room to rehearse them any more than there are longer ones. So this finding supports the model's view that the phonological loop has a limited capacity, which is determined by how many words you can vocalise in two seconds. We also have brain studies that support the working memory model. So we've got Bravo et al, 1997 gave participants tasks which used the central executive whilst they were having their brain scanned. So think of a scanner on their brain and they're doing tasks. And what the researchers found was greater activity in that left prefrontal cortex. And that activity increased as the task became harder. So when we think of the working memory model, as the task gets harder, more demands are placed on the central executive and so therefore it has to work much more harder to function more. So we've got this biologically based evidence which is a strength. So I've just had a look at the past papers and I found this question from a specimen set one paper one. So it says describe and evaluate the working memory model of memory 16 marks. Now this has an officially been asked but it has been put forward by the exam board as one to practice so it is 16 marks an a-level paper so you, you may use the space to plan your answer when that comes up on a question it generally means that students don't do that well on that particular spread in the textbook so really do plan have a go at that see what you can remember and fill in the blanks of your memory that you've forgotten so this was how that would be marked. So it was AO1 six marks and AO3 for 10 marks. Remember, you have to know more evaluation in your A-level exams as opposed to what you did at AS level and you get longer questions. So have a look through the different levels, determine what it is that you need to do. You've got here, there are occasional inaccuracies in level three, whereas level four, you've got that it's accurate and generally well detailed the answer is clear, coherent and focused. So if you start getting things a little bit muddled 
and a bit inaccurate, you're already down in level three. So you've got to make sure that you're clear and concise in your answer. Here is your content that you can include. We've got here a point at the bottom of the mark scheme, only credit evaluation of the methodology used in studies when made relevant to the discussion of the model. Remember, it wants you to be outlined and evaluating the model, not, not really anything other than that. It has to be in relation to that model, be relevant. Think what you're writing, is that relevant? Check back if you can, see if it does answer the question. You've got to make sure you're answering that question. This is another exam question that was asked on an AS paper 1 June 2016. So this has discussed what psychological research has shown about working memory. In your answer, refer to theory and or evidence. As you can see, you've got a box there. It's because students will struggle with this question mainly. But discuss, that means describe and evaluate. It's A01 and O3 marks as this is an AS paper it would be an equal split. So you'd have six marks for AO1, six marks for AO3. But for those of you on A level and wanting to practice this, change it to four AO1 marks and eight AO3 marks, because that is how it would be marked if it was an A level question. Notice that it says what psychological research has shown. So you've got to be including research here. You've got to know your research and be talking about it. I can ask you anywhere to talk about research. So you've got to be prepared for it. Here's your different bands, your levels that you need to have a quick scan through. Check what the difference are. It's normally about there being inaccuracies. Yeah, there we are. Level three inaccuracies, omissions, whereas level four, it's generally well detailed and accurate. Make sure you are checking through those because I do think it is helpful and students tend not to look at that. You've then got your content and possible discussion points. Credit other relevant material, that's always there on mark schemes. But notice also it gives you a little pointers. Note, ethical issues in relation to studies would not normally be relevant as they do not affect the understanding of working memory. So you can't talk about research and then just say, oh, but this is ethical issues because of X, Y and Z. Like you've got to make sure you're, whatever you're evaluating, it's in relation to working memory. Don't make generic points in terms of this sort of style question because it's wanting you to focus and you've got to think, do, is there ethical issues with a model? There isn't in terms of this case. So really be thinking and be very concise and clear in your answer. So we also have these questions from an AS paper one from June 2018. So question five is describe the phonological loop component of the working memory model for three marks. And question six is suggest one way in which the working memory model might be a better explanation of short term memory than the multi-store model. One mark. Now look at that question six. It's one mark. So don't fall into the trap of writing sentences and sentences. It's barely anything. It wants something short. Also, students get confused between working memory model and multi-store. Working memory model is completely talking about different components of short-term memory, whereas multi-store model looks at short-term memory, but also long-term memory. So really do make sure you've got that clear in your mind. If we look at the mark scheme in terms of the phonological loop, it is all AO1 marks there. And there's a clear distinction between one mark, two marks and three marks. You need to be clear and coherent for that phonological loop. Possible content, it's given to you there. Make sure you're having a look through those points. It's the very short, simple. You don't want to be writing masses because it's all outline. You've also got the question number six suggest one way. Look how short they are. Possible content. It is not a unitary store. It has a range of support. It's very brief. Do not be spending a long time on that type of question. We also have another question from an A-level paper one from June 2018. So here we've got quite a bit of a study and then you have to work out what is what. So we've got in condition A, 20 students perform the following two tasks at the same time, mentally counting backwards from 100, 
tracking coloured shapes on a computer screen. In condition B, 20 different students perform the following two tasks in the same time, mentally counting backwards from 100, reading a poem out loud. The research predicted that the performance of students in condition A would be better than the performance of students in condition B. Name the two components. This is just name. It just wants the words of the components of working memory that would be involved in the performance of the tasks in condition A. So if we have a look at the mark scheme, it is relatively flexible this because we know that the phonological loop also has the articulatory loop and the phonological store. And then we also know that the visuospatial sketchpad has that inner scribe and that visual cache. So it gives you different variations. What you can you can mention any of those that mentally counting backwards from 100 is your phonological loop or any of those other options, and that tracking of coloured shapes on a computer screen is your visuospatial sketchpad, or any of the others. It says here, if more than one component is named for either task, only the first should be marked. So if you write down two, or put three down, because you're not sure, like different ones, you can only mark the first one. And also it does say here, except the central executive episodic buffer for either component, but you can't put the same answer for both. So it is a very clear guidance there on the mark scheme, what it's looking at. You also have another one. So this is A level paper one, June 2018. Discuss one strength of the working memory model for four marks. So you've really got to put a clear peel paragraph there, I would suggest, because it only wants one strength. And make sure you've got enough information to pad that particular point out. If we have a look at the mark scheme, we have potential possible strengths there that you can use. But here, if more than one strength is presented, all should be marked and the best one credited. So it just depends with this mark scheme. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you mention more than one, but it's just don't waste time mentioning it because you can just really clearly state and pad out one that would be best and then that should get your full marks. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope that helps. Best of luck with the rest of your revision.